we celebrate today the feast of Christmas. Christmas is the birth of Jesus and celebrated every year on the 25th of December. The reason why I deliberately use the term the birth of Jesus and not the birth of Christ is because I want us in our reflection today to focus on the human Jesus. How did the nativity take place? In a very summary form, when God looked down at God's beloved earth, God saw that things were not as they were meant to be. And so God the Father had a discussion with the Son and the Spirit. And in their discussion, they decided that after all that they had done in the past, like sending prophets, like sending kings, like sending messengers, like sending blessings, nothing seemed to have worked. Now, there was only one way, a radical way, a revolutionary way, an out-of-the-box way in which God could intervene in history. And this way they chose was the Incarnation. The Incarnation was the way God realized that God could be exactly and totally and completely human and so understand exactly what human beings go through. Choosing the Incarnation meant a number of things, but for our reflection today, I will choose four meanings of Christmas, four meanings of the Incarnation. And the first is the total disponibility of God. The word disponibility might be translated availability, but goes much beyond availability, you might say. By being disponible, God made himself vulnerable. God in Jesus remained in the womb of his mother for the normal gestation period of around nine months. And even as he remained in the womb of his mother, he was vulnerable. By choosing that way, God was telling the world that he wanted to be as vulnerable as every human being is. If such is the case, and if this is the method which our God chose, how can we ever be frightened of such a God? Our God made himself weak. Our God made himself vulnerable, as the letter to the Philippines says, he never counted equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form not only of a servant, but even going to the depths of a slave and death on a cross. In other words, our God in Jesus was vulnerable. Our God in Jesus was weak. Our God in Jesus was totally, completely, in every sense of the word, human. Could God have chosen another way? Definitely. Could God have chosen to intervene through another method? Definitely. However, because God chose the Incarnation, we come to the second aspect of the implications of this choice. And the second aspect is this, that not only did God make himself vulnerable, God put himself at the mercy of humans. If God had to become a human, he could not become a human unless a man and a woman typified in Joseph and Mary, said yes. 
in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18, till chapter 2, verse 23, we read the sequence of the dreams to Joseph. And in the first dream, he is told to take the pregnant woman Mary, with whom he has had no relations as his wife, and to accept the child as his own and be the foster father of the child. In the second dream, he is told to rush with the child and the mother and go to Egypt. And in the third dream, he is asked to come back to Nazareth only so that God's plan, God's will will be fulfilled. And in all of these dreams, when Joseph arises, his response to God is, your will be done. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the angel Gabriel makes the announcement to Mary. And Mary's response is only as Mary can respond, not simply a yes, not simply I will cooperate with you, not simply I will join forces and collaborate with you. Mary goes beyond that when she says, let it be done to me according to your word. Mary expresses what may be termed as a passive activity or an active passivity. In other words, Mary will let God take the initiative. Mary will let God take the first step. Mary will let God do in her and to her, because she knows that if it is God acting in her, she will be much more efficacious than if she acts on her own. And so Joseph and Mary, who represent the human response, were absolutely imperative and necessary for God to come into our world. If Joseph had said, no, I cannot be the foster father. If Mary had said, no, I cannot bear the child of God, the incarnation would not be possible. In other words, the second point which we have to reflect on is this, that we as humans have the power to bring Jesus into the world. Whenever we say an enhancing yes, Whenever we reach out in love, whenever we are selfless, whenever we are a little less selfish than we can be, it is at that moment that God is born because then our response is just like the response of Joseph and Mary. The third aspect for our reflection is this humanity of Jesus. Very clearly, if Jesus remained in the womb of his mother, if very clearly, if he was born from that womb into the world, there is no doubt whatever that he was totally and completely human. However, Jesus did not simply remain human. He revealed to us through his humanity, how far we can go as humans. Before Jesus, we thought we could run only this fast. And Jesus says, no, you can run faster. Before Jesus, we thought we could jump only this high. And Jesus says, no, you can jump higher. And before Jesus, we thought we could be only this brave. And Jesus says, no, you can be braver. And before Jesus, we thought we could be only this much. And Jesus says, no, you can be more. In other words, because of the humanity of Jesus, our own humanity has become limitless. There is no limit to the extent we can jump and run and be and love and give. Now, ours is not a plaintive cry like we sing in the hymn or song, I'm only human. No, 
No, I am human. In other words, I'm not a bird, I'm not a plant, I'm not a tree, I'm not a fish, I'm not an animal, I'm human. And because of the humanity of Jesus, my own humanity is not now a disadvantage. My own humanity is an advantage. And so in Jesus I see my humanity and in Jesus I see my own divinity. In other words, there is nothing now after Jesus which can stop me from doing anything that I imagine. There is nothing now after Jesus that can stop me from loving unconditionally and giving unconditionally and being selfless and being forgiving and being the kind of person that Jesus was. And finally, the fourth point of our reflection is the name that was chosen for the child. In the case of Jesus, the foster father Joseph had no reason to choose the name. The mother of the child Jesus, Mary, did not choose the name. The prerogative of the choice of the name was not given to them because the name was chosen by God through the angel. When the angel appears to Joseph, Joseph is told very clearly that he must take, if he is willing, the woman as his wife and name the child Jesus. When the angel appears to Mary in the Gospel of Luke, the angel tells her very clearly that she, if she accepts the invitation, she will bear a son whom she will call Jesus. In other words, the name Jesus is chosen by God, his real father. And this name is chosen for two reasons. The first is that Jesus was not a rare name. Jesus was a very, very common name. By choosing the name Jesus, what God wanted to communicate was that his son would not be special. His son would not be extraordinary. His son would be like every other human being in every single way. He would walk with them. He would talk with them. He would live with them. He would eat with them. And in doing all of this, he would inspire them. He would enhance them. He would boost them. He would build them up. He would show them who they could be. So the common name meant that Jesus wanted to be just like his contemporaries. He did not want to be regarded as special. He did not want to be regarded as extraordinary. And yet, through the way he lived, through the way he walked, through the way he talked, through the way he reached out to people, he showed that even in that ordinary way, he could be extraordinary, he could be special, he could be revolutionary, he could be radical. This is the reason for the choice of the name Jesus. The second reason why God chose the name Jesus is because he wanted people to know the function his son would perform. And the function his son would perform is explained by the name because the name Jesus or Yehoshua or Joshua means God saves. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 gives us the meaning, the etymology of the name Jesus when Matthew tells us that Jesus will be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In other words, when we use the name Jesus and when we use the name Savior, we are saying the same thing. Jesus is Savior. Jesus means Savior. Our God is not a God up in the heavens. Our God it's not a God directing us to do things that he himself did not do. Our God in Jesus is not only vulnerable. Our God in Jesus is not only ordinary. Our God in Jesus is not only like us in every single way. But our God in Jesus 
by doing all of these things and being all of these things shows us how far we can go. Our God in Jesus has come to save us, to redeem us, to indicate that we are special, that we are loved, that no matter how far away we might go from God, God will always take us back when we are willing. He will always forgive us. He will always pardon us. He will always have mercy on us. He will always accept. And so today, as we celebrate the Feast of Christmas, we reflect first on this disponibility, the vulnerability of God. God could have chosen any other way, and yet he chose the way of the incarnation because he wanted to be vulnerable. He wanted to be disponible. He wanted to be available to us only as God could be. Our response is absolutely necessary. Our response is imperative if our Savior has to be born again. The response of Joseph and the response of Mary inspires us to keep saying like they did. Let it be done to me. We ask God to take the initiative. We ask God to do in and through us because then, like in the case of Joseph and Mary, whatever we do will not merely be efficient, it will also be efficacious. Let us remember that our Lord has shown us that our humanity is now not a disadvantage, it is an advantage. There is no limit to where we can go because Jesus has shown us the way. And even as we reflect on Jesus, let us know that he is a God who saves. Never will be frightened of such a God. Never will we look at such a God in trepidation. We look at this God only in love because he loved us first. A very happy Christmas to everyone.